Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert your raw data from your two pH graphs um, and convert that into data that you will then plot on Excel. Um, and I want you to plot both graphs on, or both data sets on one graph. So the very first thing I want you to do, and what I've done here with data that I made up, is enter the data from your experiment. So notice how in column A, I have the BRAT reading in milliliters. Realize for all of these numbers, there are no units. I left column B empty, and that's going to be my column where I have volume of NaOH added. Realizing because I did not start at zero, I'm going to have to subtract my initial reading to get the volume actually added and the corresponding pH. So what I want you to do now is pause this video, open Excel, and get your data entered into Excel like I have on mine. So A and C, burette reading, pH, this is your raw data. And then for your titration number two, the same information, but from your second trial, so you should have many more data points. I have just an example of some here. As soon as your data is entered into Excel like this, go ahead and hit play on the video. Okay, pause now. Okay, welcome back. So now that you've got your raw data into Excel, we're going to use Excel to be a calculator so we can subtract 0.32 from all of our readings. Realizing the volume added, this is our initial pH where there is no NaOH added yet. So I need to subtract 0.32, which was my initial reading, from all of these values. To do that, you type equals on your um, computer and realize what I'm typing in here is in cell B2. It also shows up in this formula entry bar on the top. So if you're ever trying to figure out what I've typed in, double check either in this cell and in the formula bar. So equals, I'm going to click on cell A2. You could also type A2. I like to click on the cell because I know what I'm um, selecting. Then minus, and now this is important, you must type in the number here. So my value is 0.32, wherever your initial is, type that in here. So minus 0 0.32. If you started at zero, just do the same process because you'll learn how to subtract for uh, titrations in the future when you're not at zero. And then press enter. And now I can click back on this cell and in my formula bar it shows what I've done. So I'm gonna do that one more time equals, and that's just the, the key to the left of the delete button on the right hand side of your keyboard. Click on cell E2 minus 0.32 or you're going to type in whatever your initial one was, enter. And now I want to do this exact same formula for all of these cells. To do so, a couple things I can do. I can take my mouse, see how right now it's a hand. If I take it to the bottom right hand corner of that cell and realize you have to click on that cell take the mouse to the bottom right hand corner and now I can see how it's a small black X and I can double click. And it did all of the math for me and now when I click on this next entry, I look at the formula entry equals A3 minus 0.32. So it's taken all of these numbers and subtracted 0.32 from it. So this really is the volume of NaOH added for that trial, or for each trial. Um, so again, bottom right hand corner, Double click, it goes down. Another thing you can do, you can just copy. So on a Mac, control C or command C on a, um, control C on a PC, command C on a Mac, and then paste, that works. So now I do this over here. Um, I'm gonna change this number, make that 1.20. So assuming I started at a different number for my second titration, equals, click on this, minus, 1.2. So that was really an entry in my lab notebook of 1.20, but on Excel, when you type in a zero at the end, the basic formatting, it goes away. So don't worry about that. Um, and then double click all the way down. So again, feel free to pause, rewind if you need to see how to do this again. So at this point, you should have all of your raw data in and a column where you have the volume added directly next to pH. So if you haven't done that yet, pause, rewind, rewatch if necessary. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make graphs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make two different titration graphs. Once I've made both graphs, I'm going to plot them on top of each other. 
So to make a graph, I'm going to highlight all of my numerical values. I'm going to go to Insert, Chart, XY Scatter. So again, Insert, Chart, XY Scatter. My numbers are, my data is already highlighted. And right away, I have my rough titration data graph. And realize I made up the numbers for this Excel file. I'm not using actual data, so my titration curve definitely looks different than what yours will look like. Um, right away, when I have this graph that pops up automatically, I go over to Quick Layout, and you'll have something like this on your computer. And you realize there are all of these different buttons you can click. I like to click the one that has a title, X and Y axis labels, and a legend. So I click that, and it automatically put axis labels here and a title. So you can double click and just edit that chart title. And that's a really easy way to modify your axes. So now this is graph one, and I don't even need to label it because I know my graph two has many more data points. I've made chart one. Do it one more time for those of you who want to see it again. Highlight all of my data. Insert, chart, XY scatter, quick layout, and then click so you have easy to access titles, excuse me, title and access um, titles. I'm going to do the same thing, highlight all of my data for graph two, insert, chart, XY scatter, and now I see how it's really easy to see that this is titration two because there's many more data points around that um, equivalence point. And again, I made the numbers up, but I knew I wanted to illustrate what a possible titration two would look like, so I added more points there. Quick layout. Okay, here we go. So now I have two titration plots on two separate graphs, and I want to get both graphs on this, or both data sets on the same graph. To do so, so right now I'm clicked on the sheet. You want to click somewhere on the graph itself, Copy, so Control C for a PC, Command C for a Mac, or you can go edit copy. Click on graph number one, Command V on a Mac, Control V on a PC, or edit, paste. And now I can see I have both data sets on one graph. So I'm gonna go back, delete the graph, the chart that only has one graph there. And now my graph is ready to go. Um, you're going to want to update your title, axis labels, this is pH, X, this is volume of NEOH added, milliliters, and I can easily tell my two titration graphs, or my two titration sets. Um, the other thing I would like you to do, because I'm going to have you print this out and bring this to class tomorrow, go to your axis labels and you're going to format, format the axes. So we're going to control click on the numerical value of the axis you want to change. Format axis, and now I want to have units every um, 0.5 PA, uh, milliliters. So major is every 5, and that's going to show where my numerical values are. And I have minor every 0.5, and that's going to give me tick marks every half of a milliliter, which is going to be helpful. And I can just click out of that, and I'm going to go back and control click again on the axis, or right click. I'm going to add major grid lines, so that's every 5 mils. I'm going to also add minor grid lines. And now I have a grid line. It's, it might be hard to see on the screen recording, but every 0.5 mils. When you print that out, we're essentially giving um, you graph paper. You do the same thing for pH. Right click, control click. Uh, format axis, and now I can see my bounds. I go from 0 to 14, which is great. Major every 2, minor every 0.4. So I'm going to do major every 2 is probably fine. Minor every 0.25. Let's see what that looks like. And now I need to go back, control click or right click, and add minor grid line. The major already there. And now I have a grid line every 0.25 pH units. And that's going to be really helpful. Okay, so this is obviously a, a video, so you can go back and rewatch anything you need to rewatch. Again, what else do you need to add? A proper chart title, 
pH for this axis title, volume of NaOH added, parentheses milliliters for this title, and print this out. So the entire graph, you'll click on the graph, file, print. My computer is a little slow. And right now I can see how it's um, not taking up the whole page. So what I'm going to do, click on the graph, file, page setup, and I want this landscape so that the graph will take up the whole page. And now print and let's see what happens. There we go. So it's larger. I believe on a Mac, depends on the version of Excel you have, um, it's challenging to get just the graph printed. Ideally, you can click on the graph and you have the um, entire graph taken up the whole page. So what I could do to kind of work around that, just make my graph as big as my screen. Oops, there we go. See how there's, oops, dotted lines showing the page break. So I'm going to make my graph, try to make my graph as large as the page. You can see we have a page break there because I already asked it to print once. File, print. Okay, and now my graph is taken up the entire size. So this is what I would love for you to bring to lab tomorrow, a graph that's printed out both data sets on one page. Okay, so hopefully this helped you. If you've got any questions, please post on Facebook. We can have, have a conversation there. You can also email me. Um, File, make sure you save your file, email it to yourself so you can bring it to lab tomorrow. If you have a laptop you like to use, bring that to lab tomorrow. We will perform our kinetics experiment. There are lab slides on Canvas to look at to get your data table set up. And while we're performing the kinetics experiment, I will have helpful hints for the pH um, calculations and what I want you to draw on this graph as well.